You don't have to have a degree in religion to understand the Bible. God is not the author of confusion. He gave the Bible to reveal where you came from, why you are here, and where you are going. The Bible is instruction for life, and it applies to the situations we humans face every day. Yes, there are difficult passages that require some deeper study, but you can understand the basics the first time you read, and most of it is basic. These short commentaries by Al illustrate the practical nature of the Word of God. Here's Al Parr with another short commentary. Truth and honesty, they're not words which define as many people as they used to, maybe not very many people that you and I know. To a great number of people, lying has just simply become a way of life. Children lie to parents, students lie to teachers, adults lie to one another. It's everywhere. We sometimes hear, well, everybody does it as if the popularity of a thing makes it all right. We hear, well, you have to lie in order to protect yourself. Well, sometimes, why do you think you need to protect yourself? If you're in the wrong, you don't need to be protected. We don't need to lie about that. And probably if we need to lie to certain people to protect ourselves against them, we're dealing with the wrong people in the first place. Do we really need to lie? Revelation chapter 21 and verse number 8, Jesus said, The fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, now catch this, and all Liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He's talking about eternal hell. To be in, eternally in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, sulfur. Not a very pleasant picture, is it? God said, all liars. He didn't ask why you lied. He didn't ask to whom you lied. He just said lying is wrong. Don't do it. Here's the end result of walking in that kind of life. It's not wrong sometimes. It's not wrong for just some people. It's lying, lying is just wrong, and people who practice it will be punished forever. That's God's saying, not mine. You remember the familiar passage, I'm sure, in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But these same believing Jews protested, Hey, we're already free. We've never been in bondage to any man. And Jesus says, You're in bondage to your sin. You're in bondage to your father. And they said, we've got Abraham to our father. And Jesus said, it's recorded in verse, in verse 44, the same chapter. You're of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks of a lie, he speaks of his own, because he's a liar and the father of it. When you're lying, you're following Satan. You're copying him. You're doing what he does and what he wants you to do. When truth has freed us from the punishment for sin, should we continue in a lie? If you continue in the word of Jesus, then you are his disciples, and then he will surely bless you. Please commit some time today to read your Bible. See for yourself how practical it is, and contact the Church of Christ in your community. Or to find the nearest local church, visit www.churchofchrist.org. There are dashes between those words, Church of Christ. These short commentaries by Al are presented by Confirming the Churches. Find us on the web at www.acts1541.org.